All right, gang, let's dive right into it. We got a nice little crew here for Webinar Wednesday. Hope everyone had a good uh, last few weeks. But I think we're on Webinar 132 or 133, uh, so we're well into the 100s here. I think we'll do a special celebration when we reach uh, 150. I think that'll be uh, closer towards the end of the year, but definitely something to look forward to. This is your first time joining us. Welcome. I am Jason there on the left. And we are lucky to be joined by David Rocklin, the digital strategist, and so much more here at Brilliant Directories. David, how, how are you doing today? Do we have you on the line with us? Hey, everybody. Happy to be back and with a great tip of the week as well. So really looking forward to it. The last webinar was lots of fun. Uh, we did about an hour and a half of, of Q&A. We were just getting questions fired at us and we were able to help a lot of people. And actually it was, uh, it was tons of fun. So we'll try to reserve a little bit of the, today's webinar for some of that Q&A action and fun. And I believe we are streaming on YouTube today. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all our latest uh, tips and tricks and training videos. Go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash YouTube and click on that subscribe button. And with that, I always like to mention, if you're not part of the Facebook group, tons of awesome and constructive, helpful conversations out there. A lot of people building their membership communities uh, together or asking questions for assistance. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and click on the blue join button. I'm in there myself, so I look forward to seeing you there too. And I do see uh, a good handful of new names and faces. So I just want to give you a warm welcome to Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, we kind of reserve this time. It's a great way for us to share some of the newer features built into the platform. More specifically, the features that you can utilize to help grow your community a bit faster or manage your website uh, a bit more efficiently. So we do cover topics on how to increase traffic, converting visitors to members, uh, improving navigation. And actually, today's tip of the week will touch a little bit on search engine optimization with regards to the speed of your website loading. So if you have questions on these topics or anything about your membership website, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible today. All right. And we actually had a ton more BD Lab updates to share. Uh, I tried to cherry pick some of the settings uh, and features uh, that either have been requested in the Facebook group or have been a uh, high value for you guys uh, with regards to how you can utilize them on your site. So I'll breeze through these relatively quickly and uh, hopefully you can uh, use some of these on your site. So the top one there, a few weeks ago, we did release the ability to have the pre-made elements, the pre-made blocks with your blog articles that you're publishing on your website. So uh, effectively, this was for the admin blog contributor membership plan. You can write a blog article, you can add images, and you can choose from the pre-made blocks right as you're writing a blog article. The problem with that is it wasn't available to members because it accesses your media manager. So we created a new editor. I'll show you where that is. It will allow your members to upload images, not accessing the core media manager where you load, you know, uh, company logos and brand images, but will also give your members, if you choose to, the ability to pull in some of the pre-made blocks into their blog posts. Uh, so let me show you what we're referring to here and how you can uh, enable this. So I have uh, just a test member here. Let me go to the dashboard. And this person, uh, for example, uh, can post a community article and they can do all the normal stuff in the editor. They can upload an image minus accessing the media manager, which is what you, the admin, can do with your text editor. But now there is a new text editor you can select here and it will add the pre-made blocks here so your members can construct more rich and uh, vibrant uh, articles if they wanted to. So let's see how we can enable that on a post type such as community articles. So the first thing we want to do is go to edit post settings. This is probably the quickest way to get there. And I'm just going to search for community articles. And when you do a quick search in the filter here, it tells you the form that it's using. So I'll go ahead and click this form. And then we want to customize the form. Okay, so uh, here's the form. I'm just going to search for uh, Froella. And this is the text editor it's currently using. Froella text editor with image upload. Now you can select Froella editor with image upload and pre-made elements. The other one with access to media manager, that's for you, the admin for your blog articles. It has the image upload, media manager access, and pre-made elements. 
All right, so let's select this one and hit Save Changes. All right, so uh, here we can see, let me refresh the page now. Okay, great. So now I have everything I had before, except now this member can pull in uh, the pre-made blocks. So if you want to give your members the ability to, I guess, create uh, richer posts using the, uh, the pre-made elements, uh, you can certainly do so uh, now with this. All right, next one here. This was a request in the Facebook group. Uh, we're all familiar with the map that we see around the site, whether it's on the lead form uh, or when you're filling out your profile for the first time. Uh, this map here, it would always start with the entire world uh, displaying. Actually, here's a picture of how it was. Uh, it would just show a Google map of the entire globe, which is fine. Uh, the logic was it's technically the center of the world based on uh, longitude and latitude. However, uh, it didn't really make too much sense. So now this map pin will try its best to frame the primary country set in the general settings of the website. So in this case, uh, we have United States set in the general settings. Let's do a quick example. Let's change the primary country to, let's say, uh, Australia uh, as an example. So we'll go to general settings and localization. And the primary country is the first thing here. And we'll search Australia and just select that. Now you might have a worldwide directory, but this just adds some context for the primary country you're, you're serving. Let's see if we refresh the page. There we go. So uh, now it just frames it in the country. Obviously, you're going to put a more specific um, address or city or region in. Uh, and then when, the, when that's saved, this pin will always show you where you've selected as your main uh, address. Let's see here. There's nothing you need to do. It just works like this. By default, it'll just start landing the pin on the primary country. All right, this one is uh, a quality of life. For those of you who are using the private member chat where members can send each other one-on-one -on -one private chat messages, if something gets out of hand, one of those members does have the ability to close the chat and flag the chat. Up until now, you as the admin, you'd only see the flagged chats in the admin area, but now when a member flags a chat, the admin of the website will be sent a simple notification with a link to the chat thread that links to your admin area. So you'll get live notifications when a private chat, in the event a private chat between two members, uh, is flagged by one of those members. All right, this next one is actually uh, pretty big news, uh, also related to an add-on, the Dynamic Category Filter add-on. And let's actually go to uh, our add-ons page here, the Dynamic Category Filter add-on. So what this allows you to do, and before this update, you could effectively have checkboxes on your sidebars. Uh, so as people are searching your site, they can click for the subcategories they want to filter down for. So before this update, if you checked boxes, it would add, it adds a checkbox sidebar. Instead of having like a search module with the categories in the dropdown or a keyword search, it puts the categories in a checkbox format. Up until now is as you checked options, it would just add any member who matched any options. So it would just increase the number of members that were showing in the results, which is good for certain use cases. But when we released this uh, quickly, people were asking us for the opposite, actually. As people check the boxes, we want the results to get smaller and smaller and narrowed down more specifically to only members uh, who match all of the checked subcategories. Uh, and sub subcategories. Uh, so let me quickly show you uh, what where that sitting setting is and how you can enable it. So it's only if you have uh, the dynamic category filter search in the sidebar. So I have a very simple one here with just three sub level categories. And before this, let me go to the uh, setting that you need to enable if you want it to be specific. Right now, it's by default it's broad. So if you go to advanced settings, search for dynamic. And this will be turned on by default. The broad match is on by default because that's how it's always worked. Broad match means it will match anyone who matches any category. If you want it to narrow down, what you can do is turn this off and save your changes. And what I'll start doing is I'll start narrowing down the results. You see we have 66 results. And actually just for this example, I've only given two members a set of subcategories that they're attributed to. Uh, so first let's search for who has sub level three. 
and the page will automatically reload. So it's really like a kayak or an Amazon search. So we have two members who have sub-level category three, which is great. Now this could be a hotel that has a pool in it, like or accommodations or a restaurant that has outdoor seating. It can go a lot of different ways based on the categories of your site. Uh, so now let's see who has a sub-level category two as well. Still two members. So we have uh, the sample member and the sample Justin member. And I've actually listed the subcategories here so we could see it visually. Now let's also select sublevel category one. We can see here now there's only one result. I've done a very specific search here and only one member matches this criteria. So this is a great way for your visitors to really drill down and find members that meet all the criteria, no matter the industry that you're uh, searching for. Again, it could be hotels, accommodations, medical, legal, all sorts of things, if you're looking to uh, have a narrow match on these filters here. So again, the advanced setting, just search for dynamic in your advanced settings, and it's this one here, dynamic category filter broad match, and turn it off if you want the more narrow and specific results. We're going to cover some speed updates in the tip of the week today, but I just wanted to make an announcement. One of the biggest uh, pieces of JavaScript that I guess would reduce page load speeds or add bloat to web pages was the Google Maps. So now we have uh, enabled the ability to lazy load the Google Maps. Uh, so the JavaScript will only load when the visitor or the page needs or requests it. It will not just load on every single load of every web page of your website. Uh, so that's a good thing. We've also done other various updates uh, similar to that, and we'll be covering it today. We'll be seeing some improved speed scores all across the board. And lastly, uh, another email notification setting. Up until now, when your members receive a review, there are some auto emails that get sent to the person who submitted the member review, uh, to the member, to the admin. There haven't been really any areas in the admin area to turn these auto notifications on or off. Now you as the admin have controls to do this. Let me show you where you can control some of the notification settings for uh, when a member review is submitted on your site. So rem member reviews are gonna be in the interactions tab. I'll click on member reviews. And uh, we have kind of the, these cogs up here, this, these settings, I'll click here, member reviews. And there's a new tab here it's the last tab. It's called notifications. And it's, they're pretty simple. Notify the admin when a review is submitted, yes or no. And then the email template that's sent is here as well. So you can click it and edit it if you need to. Notify the member when they receive a review. This can be on or off as well if you want your members to get pinged when they receive a review on their profile. And uh, there's two here uh, for the submitter. Notify the submitter that the review has been received. Basically, after they submit the review, they get a confirmation saying we've received your review. And if you are manually approving reviews, um, so they go into a, a pending state when they're received, and you, the admin or the website member, depending on how you have it set up, has to approve the review. You can automatically send a notification email again to the submitter saying, hey, Congratulations, your review is now public on the website. You probably want to put some other calls to action in there, join our Facebook group, do X, Y, and Z on our website. Again, uh, great places to have touch points with your members and the people who submit the reviews, the visitors of your site in these emails. All right, and a few great items coming down the line. I have mentioned this in previous webinars. The file upload add-on is technically complete now. We've been waiting a couple months for that. I wanna give a big, big round of applause to the development team. It's a bit harder than it sounds. There's a lot of security, things that we need to take into consideration when having public file upload fields in the forms that you're creating. This is gonna be great. So if you want someone to upload a, a PDF resume or an image uh, when they're submitting a lead or on a custom form you create for an application or something, they can now upload those types of files with that. What we are waiting for is our support team is gonna create some great documentation uh, to go in hand with the file upload add-on. Uh, so when we release it, the documentation will be there. We'll have some videos on how it works and hopefully that will help us with a smooth release uh, to everyone. So uh, we're just a few weeks away and we'll definitely be sure to keep you posted in the Facebook group. In addition to that, we have actually released some additional Zapier webhooks to send, continue to send data out from your BD website. And and we are also going through final QA to send and port data 
into your BD site from Zapier or Pabli um, or other uh, tools like that. So you'll be able to send feeds into your site if you want to find a feed and import members or a source for leads or posts. Uh, that is the direction that we're going with. So you can use these tools to rapidly import feeds uh, from other third-party services into your BD website. Also, we'll be sure to keep you posted in the Facebook group with that. And in addition to that, we're trying to expand the domain settings. Right now, you can go to the domain manager and change your domain name. Uh, we're going to create some email authentication settings there, uh, some security settings for your website, uh, some integrations that are related to your domain name, SSL management, and some other cool goodies. So we're looking to turn that domain manager into a command center just to make sure the health of your domain and your website are in good shape uh, with good vitals and to make sure that you have all the important things uh, turned on for your business that you need. Uh, so we'll be sure to keep you guys posted with that. That was a mouthful. Uh, before we dive into the tip of the week, if you have a question about these updates, we'll do Q&A later. But if you have questions or comments about any of these updates, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, we'll take a comment or question or two before we move on to the tip of the week. How's it going, Evan? Hey, good, Jason. How you doing? Appreciate Great. the information. Good stuff. Um, awesome. Related to the speed uh, feature that, that you uh, talked about, I'm curious if you've run any tests uh, on existing sites with that uh, feature versus not and what the uh, variation is. Absolutely. I've been losing sleep over it out of joy, by the way, <laughs> uh, testing these tools on um, all, both on our demo sites and our testing sites or on sites that are being mentioned in the Facebook group for me to take a look at and things like that. A couple things. That's a good question. We're seeing the the baseline benchmarks for the sites are really good. We're seeing 80s and 90s percents for them. What we're seeing bogged down the scores is when customers, and it's perfectly fine to do so, are, are adding some third-party resources to their site, like um, Google Ads or some live chat tools or some weird embed modules for podcasting and things like that, which is totally fine. So what we're, we're seeing is when those third-party tools are bringing the page scores down, these settings are kind of balancing it out and pushing them back up. So like a site that I was working on was like a Google page speed of 30 to 40 on mobile. And just by turning on some of these settings, we were able to get that mobile score up to 65 and the desktop score in the high 80s, which, which is a healthy number. And they had a ton of like JavaScripts and third-party uh, resources mm -hmm. being loaded on the site. Okay, I'll have to I'll have to play with that. I I've heard recently from my uh, BD site that the uh, speed is a little bit slower than it was in the past. So I'm just curious if it's something I'm doing or something that the team is doing wrong versus not um, at all. It's it's just um, general maintenance. Um, we're going to cover it yeah. in the tip of the week today, so maybe you could pull uh, one or two actionable things that you can apply to your yeah, site perfect. after the webinar. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, good stuff there. All right, we got another hand up. All right, we got our good friend Robert here. How's everything, Robert? Good, 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 good. I like that uh, the user themselves gets the re gets an email notification that they have a review. Well, my question was, uh, will that work for claim listings? Yes. Okay. So, so it'll work for claim listings. This is a great question, and I've seen people do this. They'll add the listings into their site. It'll only work with the claim listings if you imported the listing with their actual email. So when they get a review, it goes to their email saying, hey, you know. Right. And I've seen this. People, yeah, because I... It's a, it's a strategy. Yeah, yeah. Load sites, you let them get reviews and, and you encourage them to claim their listing to reply to the review or, you know, contest the review, things like that. Yeah, because I... Right. And I've been doing mine manually simply because it's just... The, the business I'm in, and um, and there's a whole lot of sites that are, are similar to what I want to do, but they're just like really, really unprofessional looking, terrible looking, and I want to make mine really spiffy. And I so I, I do it myself. And so if I put their email in, wherever I get that from, then yeah, and and I was set it up to where any user can write a review and any user can read it, but to respond to it, they have to be a member. So, yeah, the reply to reviews is a great incentive, yeah. um, especially yeah. if it's a non not a favorable review that they've received uh, and they care about their online reputation. Uh, you know, if right. they don't tend to it, those kind of things add up. But it, it sounds like you have a great, a great idea here. And to your point about kind of touching up the reviews that come in for grammar, 
when when we were starting with our own directories about 10 years ago, we were getting leads um, in a few industries like interior design and legal leads from the directories. And we wouldn't send them to the members. We would actually take the time to call the leads, extract more information to make that to, to verify the, the phone number, the person's name, but, but basically to add some more value to that lead. So when we did match it with a member, they, they knew they were getting a quality lead and they were happy to pay a premium for that. But the same goes for, for the reviews as well as it just keeps the quality of, of your or company and brand uh, in good spirits with your members and visitors. But yeah, and even even addition to that, I can I can edit the lead. Like I can edit my the review myself. Is that right? You you can edit the review. It's pretty common if there's like an obvious misspelling there. You know, you just want to make sure it's it's yeah. grammatically correct and things like that. There's nothing wrong with small okay. small touch ups like that. Yeah, That's just good. In my maintenance. opinion, when you know if, you know if you go reading reviews on Google and everything, if there's somebody who there that just complains all the time and their grammar's horrible and everything, you know, they lose a lot of credibility. <laughs> That's my opinion. I like that. So great way to get customers. I think. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. Well, thank you for sharing that, uh, Robert. Um, yeah, editing the reviews for grammar and spelling is great. I wouldn't change the context of it too much to try to silence uh, the people and what they wrote. But again, grammar and spelling seems like it would be above board there. All right, guys. So without further ado, we've put together a fantastic tip of the week. I should say David has five ways to rocket boost your website speed. Uh, so if it's okay with you, may I pass it over, uh, David, and you can take us on this little journey here. Absolutely. So really excited to dive into this topic. Obviously, it's one that's really popular with uh, a lot of our users and a lot of you joining us uh, today. So we'll talk about some basic information regarding website speed and load times and everything like that before we dive into uh, some of the recent updates that our team has pushed with regard to website load times and, and page speeds and everything, and then give you some, uh, some actionable steps that you can take as well on your own Brilliant Directories website. First thing we'll talk about here, why website speed and load times are important. I think obviously most of us know that it's better to have a fast website than a slow website. We experience that every day when we're browsing the web and visiting different websites. It's obviously a lot more enjoyable of an experience when we're on a website that's loading smoothly. It doesn't have to be lightning speed, but at least everything's working well and moving smoothly. On a website like that, visitors will tend to browse more pages if a website is loading relatively quickly compared to a website that's loading slow, you know, maybe taking 10, 15, 20 seconds to load one web page. Typically at that point, the user will just move on to, to a different website. With that, having a fast website, allowing visitors to browse more pages on your website, it will then in turn allow those visitors to engage with your website more. And especially if you have a membership website, it could certainly encourage them to sign up once they find out some more information about your website. They see the other people who are registered on your website, things like that. So in this case, having a better performing website could increase the chances of you landing a sale. And lastly, website speed is actually good for SEO. Whether it be Google or Bing or any other search engine, they typically do favor more speedy websites over the slower websites. But this is only one factor among literally thousands of factors that they take into consideration when determining search result ranking. But certainly it is one that they take into consideration. And that kind of provides us with a nice segue into the next slide. How much should you actually care about your website speed? And the truth is you should care about it. It should always be something that might be in the back of your mind. But it's not the only thing you should be thinking about, and it's certainly not something that you should be obsessing over. A fast website that has poor content, it won't be a success. It doesn't matter how fast the website is. At that point, you, know, you could spend days and weeks trying to optimize your website to make it as fast as possible. But if you're not paying any attention to the content on your website and the amount of engagement that your visitors are having on your website, then ultimately it won't matter too much at the end of the day. So really keep your website speed in the back of your mind. And, and we'll talk about some, some certain things to think about in the upcoming slides here, but don't obsess over it. Let us and our team obsess over the website speed for you. It's something that we're always working on. Uh, as Jason mentioned, we've released several new updates recently that have made 
a big difference in terms of website speed, and, and we'll touch on those in a couple slides here. Yeah, I always like to use the analogy, um, you know, there, there's restaurants out there, they're, they're hole in the walls, they're grimy, they're dirty, they're grungy, but they have a line out the door because the food is good, the content is good. Then you have fancy schmancy restaurants uh, with, with nice white tablecloth, but they're empty on a Saturday night uh, just because the you know, the food's not good there, whatever, the service isn't good there. So, you know, speed is kind of like that, that the most important thing is how you're continuing to engage with your community. If you have a good relationship and following from your tribe, they'll be forgiving even on your page speed and even other things. You, you mess up an email newsletter that goes out, things like that. However, you do want your speeds to maintain reasonable KPIs and uh, benchmarks. So uh, if there's something that's obviously slow on your site, definitely let the BD team know. Uh, we always want to take a look at it and see how we can improve it. We don't want to sweep it under the rug. <laughs> yeah, that was a great analogy. Now just a couple things to consider with regard to website speed and specifically page load times. Smaller, lighter pages with less elements on them will obviously always load faster and be lighter in size than pages that are larger, have many elements. You know, think of a web page that has several thousand lines of text, a bunch of very large, super high quality images, as well as maybe some third party elements. In some cases, you might need to have a web page like that, but always keep in mind a web page like that will certainly load slower than uh, a smaller kind of trimmed down web page. But more importantly, stacking a lot of third party tools uh, will certainly slow down your website. Typically these third party tools that you can embed on your website or on specific pages on your website add heavy resources that end up hogging a lot of your website's bandwidth. So when you're utilizing these third party tools and, and determining whether or not you you really need them on your website, consider the value versus the speed cost that those resources are providing your users. Because at the end of the day, those are the people who it's going to affect. And also consider when you are using these third-party tools, the embed code that they provide you, does it need to load on all the pages? You know, a lot of these tools tell you to paste the embed code in the website header so that it loads on all the pages. But does it actually need to load on all the pages or do you just need it to load? in certain areas of the website. So be mindful when uh, deciding on that. Uh, and then just real quick tip here, some of the top offenders when it comes to these third-party tools that use a lot of resources are Google or any other dynamic display ads. You know, they utilize a lot of tracking resources. Live chat tools use a lot of uh, your website's resources as well. And social networking plugins, whether these be plugins for like Twitter or Facebook, or even just the simple plugins like share this, which embed share buttons on different content on your website so that users can share that content on different social platforms. Something small like that actually does use a, a lot of resources. So just some things to be mindful of here. Yeah, and also a good thing to consider is, you know, all these third-party tools, they're really shiny, they, they spin and they do cool things when you click on them and they fly across the homepage. Again, being mindful, like instead of throwing the whole enchilada onto your website of every little thing you find around the internet that could be quote unquote cool on your website, think of these third party plugins, use them more like uh, tapas uh, meals, like small little dishes uh, that you want to serve on specific pages or areas of your website. Uh, they can be best enjoyed by your visitors in that manner uh, rather than a pile of, uh, I love nachos, but you know, a pile of nachos for 10 people loading on every single page of your site. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit much sometimes, but we like the challenge sometimes also. I've, we've had customers share their sites and we've just by moving some things around, you know, and keeping the third party resources that they want or need because you don't have to get rid of them. You just probably, have to load them in the right places of the site. Uh, you can have your cake and eat it too. Uh, a lot of food analogies today. I guess it's kind of hungry, but you can have your cake and eat it too with those third-party scripts. So with that, we do have some new settings uh, to share with you guys. 
I would ima- I would recommend taking advantage of some, if not all, if you can. So I'll run through these. I'll show you where these settings are, how you can enable them. And then lastly, I will take some Q&A on whatever topics you want. Maybe we could look at your site speed and see if we can implement some of these things uh, for you. Uh, so the first thing is uh, BD has subscribed to its own CDN network, a content delivery uh, network uh, for all of the default resources that need to load on a Brilliant Directory's website. It's, it's great for any site, especially if you have international users, and uh, it's just going to load the site for your visitors a lot more efficiently. So let me show you where this first setting is, enable resource a delivery. You don't need to do anything but turn it on. So this will be in your advanced settings. Several of these will be in the advanced settings. And what I like to do is uh, just search for optimization in the keyword here. And we have three key ones here. It's the first three on our checklist. Uh, The first one is front end optimization, enable resource delivery via CDN. You don't need to do anything except turn this on. And what this is going to do is all the default uh, resources that are making your site come alive uh, will come from Brilliant Directory's CDN as opposed to loading locally from your domain name, uh, which is not as efficient. So the first thing you can do is search for optimization and turn uh, this one on here. The next one is only load Google Maps when requested. As I mentioned before, Google Maps uh, is kind of the biggest piece of bloatware uh, on sites that have maps and things like that. So we've taken the last uh, couple months, actually, uh, to really tame the beast of the Google Maps JavaScript and only load the maps when they're requested by the visitor or the page needs them. And that helped tremendously with the scores. Uh, This is also something that you don't need to do except toggle the switch. However, there is one caveat. You might have a customized widget that conflicts with this, uh, but we'll show you an alert on what to disable or what to update when you're enabling this setting. So for this one, the Google Maps one, also come to your advanced settings, search for optimization, and it'll be this last one here, only load Google Maps when requested by user. Go ahead and turn that on. If you get an alert saying, oh, this widget is customized, that you need to edit it or disable it uh, first, uh, there'll be some instructions here with an alert. Go ahead and take care of those warnings and then come back and enable this again to save your changes. All right, and this next one is a third-party tool. It's called Image Kit, and they have a free plan uh, with 20 gigabytes per month, which is plenty. And what they're going to do is also serve all the images that load on your site from their CDN network, their content delivery network. Speed tools love this, like uh, Google PageSpeed, GT Metrics, uh, etc. And you know, we hear this a lot. Oh, can, we want all the images to be WebP images on our website. It's a new format for images that, again, these speed tools love. Uh, Image Kit will automatically convert in real time, dynamically, all the images that are loading on your site in WebP format. And for this, I was going to just quickly set up an account and go through the steps on how to set up an Image Kit account and then just copy and paste uh, the URL for your own CDN that they provide uh, to you. And then your images will be loading uh, from Image Kit. And actually, let's take two steps back. Let us turn off. Uh, these two things, front end optimization and uh, the Google Maps. And let's take a look at the page speed score on this site that we're playing around with. And also the image kit uh, field here is empty as well. So let's go back here and uh, let's just reload this page. This page, the home page does have some content on it. It has some uh, member images, reviews, uh, a few blog articles here. And let's just do a page speed test here. So this is Google PageSpeed, and I also like to do uh, GT Metrics as well, but we'll do PageSpeed here. And I'll keep this page here, and we'll do all our optimization. That's actually a pretty good score, uh, even with the optimizations turned off. Maybe it's it's caching it before the the uh, settings. But anyways, we'll come back and uh, we'll just check uh, check out some of these scores. Again, we've done a lot across the board for the speed with or without these settings. So let's set up an image kit account and let's see what it does. Uh, the best way to see what it does first is let's inspect this image here. And we can see that it's coming from our website. Uh, it's, it's a forward slash. Uh, it's coming here and it's a PNG. And if I download this image, let's save this image. All right, that image is 72 kilobytes, this one here. 
that got uploaded. So we'll go ahead and enable image kit and then we'll see how big that image is after uh, we do the image kit setup. Uh, so I was going to set up an image kit just for, with our events at Brilliant Directories account. We have no affiliation with them. We just think they're an awesome tool. There are other tools that do similar things, and you could do a similar setup with some other tools as well. We just found this one to be the easiest one to just plug and play. All right, let's sign up for a free account. Okay, email verification. Perfect. Uh, so it's just going to ask me to create like a slug uh, for the URL. That's going to be my image kit URL for my images. I could do something SEO friendly if I want. It doesn't really matter. I'll just do um, webinar demo. And the region where you want your images to be served doesn't matter too much, but like the primary country, you might want to choose something that's slightly closer to the region of the majority of your users. In this case, I'll choose North California because I'm in Los Angeles here and we'll go next. Okay. So you're going to have two options here. They sound uh, confusing. Actually, all you need to really do is click external storage. There's it's two steps now. So we registered a free account. Then I just need to go to external storage and click add new. And I'm going to give it a nickname. This is basically going to be my website here. So I'll do Jason 1927. Let's move this over here. That's my nickname. And then you want to select HTTP or HTTPS, basically the URL of your website, the base URL. We're, all, we're halfway there. And we just pasted that. So that's it. So I did three things. I gave it a nickname. I chose web folder HTTPS, whatever that does, and my the URL of my website. I'm going to hit Save Changes. Okay, so that's half the step. Now I need to create what's called a URL endpoint. Again, sounds confusing. Don't worry about it. Just click URL endpoint and click add new. And now I can create another unique identifier. You can do for multiple websites. So I'll just call this website one. And for the description, just so I know that it's for this website, I'll put here and I'll attach it to an existing origin. The origin connects to an endpoint, but I'll just choose the uh, the external resource that I selected. Okay, now I'm done. I've done everything. I just copy this URL and hit save changes. Okay, I don't need to do anything else. Now I copy this URL, the URL endpoint, copy this here. This is all mine. It only works on my website. And I'll go back to my settings here, advanced settings. I filtered for the word optimization. And I'm looking for this first one here, use content delivery network for images. And I'll go ahead and paste it there. So actually I was doing explaining, but really takes 30 seconds to a minute, about a minute to set up an account for your website. I'll click save changes now. Okay. And let's duplicate this page. Okay, great. So let's go back to this guy's uh, picture here. So what's cool is in the code, it'll still show as a PNG, but we can see here, now we have the image kit URL. It says IK image kit webinar demo and, and whatever, and then the regular thing. So let's download this image now. We'll do save image as. Couple things here. It's saving it as a WebP image because that's what it's loading, WebP. Go ahead and save it. And look at the size difference, five kilobytes. I don't want to hover over it because the size goes away. Five kilobytes compared to 72 kilobytes. So as we mentioned in the previous slides, smaller images, lighter pages help with page load time because like if you're on a cell phone and you have data resources or uh, you have a slow internet connection like I think I have here today on the webinar, that data adds up and it can slow the web page down. So again, ImageKit is free. I think they give you 20 gigabytes per month, which I think is plenty for 95% of uh, BD users. Very generous. And uh, yeah, it'll serve your images in WebP format. So it'll cut the size by, I don't even know what percent that is, 72 to 5 to 72. And the page speed scores tools love it. And you don't need to do anything else. All you did was paste it into this advanced setting here. All right, let's continue here. So yeah, image kit for image delivery, definitely recommend that. This next one is also image recommended. If you guys aren't familiar with the developer hub section in your Brilliant Directories admin, there is an image settings section. 
And effectively what this does is if your members come to your site and they want to load a profile image and they upload something that's like 6,000 pixels wide, that's, that's really too much. So uh, what you can do in the image settings, you probably don't need to do this, but if you haven't visited it in a while or you have your site for a couple years now without coming back to this page, I would just come back here and make sure that uh, you have reasonable sizes for the image settings. So this is going to be in the developer hub under image settings. And you really don't need to do anything here. If you're unsure or if you see like weird sizes or sizes that are like 8,000 or 6,000, it should never be that big. Feel free to click the restore default button as many times as you want. Uh, these are safe sizes uh, for the default images. So if a, if a member does come to your site and uploads a 6,000 pixel profile photo, uh, it'll be scaled down proportionally to the max width and the max height that you've set here in your image settings, further enhancing uh, the optimization and delivery of images so nobody is loading is taking over your, your site or your web pages. Uh, with egregiously large uh, image sizes. So you just restore the defaults and then click Save Changes. Something easy we can all do. And lastly, a lot of us upload images to our media manager. And sometimes we do have those 6,000 pixel images or uh, we have images that we just cropped from Canva or from Photoshop. But a lot of those images that we save and upload carry a lot of metadata inside of them. Uh, the location tags, the date tags, and all that adds to the, uh, the file size of the images. So there's a tool like Image Optin where if... And we build a lot of pages on BD, like landing pages and things like that. We're not, it's not tons of images, but we're again, mindful when we do add an image to the page to make sure it's not egregiously large, like 6,000 pixels. And I like to run it through a tool like Image Optum. It's free. It just reduces all the metadata and shrinks the sizes significantly. Let's actually take an example. Let's take a screenshot of this page, print screen, and let's go to Photoshop and save the image and just compare it to what Image Optum does uh, compared to a uh, thing. So here's Photoshop compared to what uh, Photoshop saves the file size as. So this is a fairly large image. It's the entire screen, the slide that we were just looking at. And I'll save for web. And I'll save it as um, a JPEG. And I'll do a very high. So that's you know, high or very high is normally what people do for JPEGs. So here it's 432 kilobytes. That's a really large file size for an image that I'm going to load on a page. Generally for large images, you want to try to stay, if they're large images, under 200. Or if you're using ImageKit, it'll convert it to a WebP format. And it's like less than a tenth of the percent of a JPEG image and things like that. So I'll go ahead and save this and save it. All right, and let's go to Image Optin. I'll share the link with everyone. I think I've shared this in previous webinars. Really simple looking site, but it, I'll be honest, it does the job. There's probably other sites that can do this for you too. Uh, this one is free. And uh, yeah, we use it. Just, it's just a quick link in my toolbar browser. So let me say I want a high uh, file, JPEG. All I have to do is browse. And here's the new image. The first one was 433. And all I have to do is do it and it's already downloading the new image. So I don't really have to do anything. You could do multiple images at the same time. And it cut the image by half almost. This is 233. So we went from like 400 plus to 233. Uh, and it's going to be the same uh, quality of image and everything like that. So Image Optim is a great way if you're creating landing pages or if you're uploading stuff to your media manager, be mindful. Try not to upload 10,000 pixel images. Uh, I don't know, those are for magazine prints and things like that. But for websites, images don't need to be more. Even for a full width screen uh, image, it doesn't need to be more than 2,000 pixels wide and try to keep it under 200 kilobytes, if not even, even less uh, using tools like ImageKit. So three of these are settings, enable the CDN resources, uh, enable the, uh, the lazy load for the Google Maps, use Image Kit for your site, it's free, and it'll just increase the speed uh, when loading images. Uh, check your image settings in the developer hub. Uh, make sure that you, uh, if you need to, just restore the defaults. Those are safe to do as many times as you need to. And if you're working on landing pages or building out custom squeeze pages and things like that, Image Optum is a great tool to run uh, your larger images through before you upload them into 
uh, the media manager. All right, and with that, let's see how much time we have left. Yeah, we have we have a good amount of time here. We could take a, some Q&A. Uh, if you want us to take a look at your site speed, if you just have a question about a general feature uh, for your BD site, we can definitely uh, take a look at it and see how we can help you here. And we'll start with uh, Colette here. How are you, Colette? Hi, Jason. I'm very well, and you? Good, good, thank you. Good, great to see all these speed updates. Um, very impressed. And, and thank you for at... thank you for all the feedback and and for encouraging us. Oh, no worries. I just love love the fact that you listen, which yeah. is great. <laughs> Jason, I'd like you to look at my the mobile page speed for my website. I'm happy with the desktop one, but mobile is still a bit slow. It seems to suggest there's JavaScript issues that could be improved on. Sure, let's take a look here. I know your site. So I actually did check out your site on the side before. Um, and I noticed you're loading um, ad plug and a couple other things, but let's let's run through it and see what the page speed says. And let's also run it on GT metrics here. Different speed tools like different things. Um, I always like to look at both of them and then take an average of them to see exactly uh, where we're at. But yeah, let's, can I, can I also take a peek in your admin area here? Oh, yes, sure. Nice. Okay, great. Okay, so on GT Metrics, um, you're getting a decent score, 82 and 93. Let's see what it's saying. Serve assets. So you have um, ad plug. You're using the Facebook login on your site as well? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, not too many alerts here, which is good. The server response time, I think that might be due uh, to some of these tools, but we can we can like do a, a quick check. We can turn them off and on real quick and see if, just to make sure that we've identified the culprit, then we know what to target. Uh, so the okay. mobile score, yeah, it's 47. It is a bit low. FCP is good. Reduce unused JavaScript. So yeah, we're seeing this ad plug here in the Facebook uh, Live. Um, are you loading stuff in your Google Tag Manager that you're that you know of, or are you just loading the Tag um, Manager? Just the Tag Manager. I tried to do the the new Analytics four, and I couldn't get it right, even with support help. So I'm just using the universal Google Analytics. Okay. Oh, so you're not. So there's nothing of value coming from the Tag Manager right now. No. No. Okay. No, other than just the analytics. Yeah. Okay. I did notice this on your. Well, looking at your homepage, um, you have. I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing. Let me go back here. Oh, so yeah. the GT metric score, I apologize. Uh, it was 82 and 93, um, so looking decent mm -hmm. there. On page speed is where we're seeing the mobile score is 47, yeah. and the desktop score is 91. So it's liking the desktop. They're real sticklers with the mobile, but it's good because it pushes us to figure out what we can do best. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a quick test uh, right now by turning off a few things just quickly to see if they're the culprits. And then your homepage images, if you're looking at those, uh, let me show you what this, because that's the next recommendation after the reduce unused JavaScript. Their next thing is properly sized images, and it's only the images here on your homepage in this little module here. The reason they're suggesting mm. that is if I open this image in a new tab, let me inspect this here. So the size of this whole area is 255 width, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm an advocate for loading images that are slightly bigger than the area that they're in. It, it adds to the sharpness of the images. So in this case, you want these images to be maybe 400 pixels wide at the most. But the images that you have, and let me open this in a new tab here. Uh, so the images that you have is are this big are this is a 789 so it's almost 800 so it's almost double what it needs or should be um, for the space that it's filling so, so again these speed scores are all about edging and things like that but um, so these images you might want to just cut the size in half and then re-upload them and i'm pretty confident that the second alert properly size images uh, will go away um, would the image kits, um, dot io help with that, or would I still have to size them? 
they, they do ha they do have settings to su they they have deeper settings than what I did. I did the quick plug and play ones, uh, but they do have really cool granular settings uh, for sizing images on the fly for the space they're filling and things like that. I'm just exploring their documentation for that, but they get they have a lot of settings and things for that. The size of the image. Let me download this image. Save image as. So the size of that image is also 55 kilobytes. So I suspect it's probably a really, really high resolution image that you have, which is great. You should have that on your site, but I think you can cut the width down by by 50% and it, you won't get this alert saying uh, properly size your images. They're just egregiously large for the space that they're filling is, is why we're seeing this alert. Okay. Um, but if I may, can we, can I just quickly remove some of these, the JavaScript that you're loading on your site and see if that changes the score? So we know that those mm -hmm. are the culprit. Okay. So I'm going to do two things and then we can turn them back on. In your general settings, just quickly, I'm going to turn off the, the Facebook login and the Google login. We are pushing another speed update that's going to optimize that, but I just want to rule that out as well. Uh, so just temporarily, I'm going to, the Google developer key, I'm going to turn that off and the enable Facebook login, I'll turn that off and I'll save that. And I know in your design settings, you have uh, these scripts here. Here's your Google tag manager. It's loading, but nothing is actually coming from the other end of value. You were trying to get your Google, uh, Google analytics, the, the new one. Let's just save these in a, uh, a little notepad here. And then you have your ad plug here, which I know is important on your site because it's loading on every page, but can we just temporarily remove it to see how it affects the score? Okay. Okay, and I'll just put it here. We can paste it back after. I'll remove this one too. And we'll save the changes. Okay, so let's um, let's refresh the page and then let's run the speed test again. We're all hoping for the best. I know <laughs> it's very suspenseful. <laughs> okay, so let's run the GT metrics one first and see. Um, I should have done it before. Well, I can go back here. This was the old score, it was 82 and 93. Let's see if we have any improvement here with that. We also learned also that the background slider affects the the page scores as well as opposed to a static image. Mm. I think you're. It's it's not well, horrible. I don't have that enabled on mobile. That's that's fine, um, but it, I think it's it's fine. The images you're loading are pretty lightweight here. I was checking them out as well. Okay, I'll run this one simultaneously now. Okay, so the structure went up here. The performance went down, actually. We could find out why some of the alerts went away, saying that reduced the initial server response time. So this would be something to uh, email to the support team, or actually I would prefer to ask in the Facebook group and we can take a look at it in a little bit deeper and see uh, what's happening here. So here we see the mobile score went up to 58 and the desktop mm -hmm. score went up just a couple more ticks to 92. Let's run it one more time. I always like to run them back to back. And I suspect if you up update those images on your homepage and just a couple of the other things, and I do want to add back your scripts. There are all our ways to lazy load the scripts, but I would I would start doing narrowing down what the different culprits are for your site. So now it looks like we're up to 50 for mobile. I'm again, it's really hard for mobile, especially with third party scripts and lots of images and things. I think 60s and 70s are good for mobile. 80s are stellar. 90 is rare mm -hmm. for mobile scores um, yeah. with Google. So I would for a site like yours, I would try to aim. I would keep the scripts that you have because you need them on your site. They're important. Um, yeah. I don't know if you need the Google Tag Manager because you said that it's not loading, but I'll put it back there anyways. But yeah, I'd love to use your site as a case study and see if we can get it up to, you know, that 60 or 75 mobile and into the 95 range for desktop. That would be great. I'll try and sort out those images and then um, let you know. Yeah, post it in the Facebook group and I'd love to take a second look. Perfect. Right. Thanks very much, Jason. You're very welcome. Thank you for sharing your site. All right, good stuff there. Okay, uh, we have our really good friend, Lindsay, here. Uh, let me unmute your microphone, Lindsay. How are you? Hi, Jason. How are you all? Good. Thank you for patiently waiting. I know you had your hand up for a little while. No, it's just to look at my website because like, I've had my website. Well, I've got three websites, but my main website, the Apprenticeship Directory for three years, and that are 
thousands and thousands of images and the speed is slow on my website. I know that. You could be a candidate for Image Kit. Let's take a look at your site and let's do a before and after and we'll take the Pepsi challenge with some of these um, speed yeah. updates. What's the name so of your site? Apprenticeshipsdirectory.com. You know, I have thousands and thousands of images and members, so I think I am a prime candidate for anything. Sure. Okay, let me see. Um, okay, I have your site here. Let me, uh, let's see where you're at. We'll do some of the speed stuff. Just a moment. Okay, let's have uh, some fun here. Let's just take a look at top to bottom of your site. So here's here's an example. We're loading uh, the Facebook chat, which is fine. You want to chat on your site. We're also loading on every page the share module, which also can sandbag the load time of a page. Maybe we want to load that on just blog article pages or a member's profile page, more specific pages rather than general pages around the site. Just from a quick look here. Uh, let's scroll down. Uh, the, the level of images here, actually, it seems pretty normal. Um, oh, there's something else happening. When I hover over an image, there's additional share stuff. So I'm assuming that's all the same share tool here. So here you do have a long lo uh, homepage of images, but let's do the speed score. Oh, and then there's a pop-up for um, Never Miss a Story. Nevertheless, let's go to your uh, site here. Let's do this page speed score and let's put it in GT metrics. I'm gonna go and hang my head in shame, I'm sure after no, this. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, so um, here we are, and so there, you know, they use colors to get in our head, by the way, so don't don't let the colors get to you, the reds and these, you know, <laughs> oranges and things like that. Uh, your structure is good. Uh, your LCP, your largest contentful paint, is actually not horrible. It's 3.9. We want to get that closer to two seconds with the amount of images you have. Um, and let's see here. Use content delivery network. That's what we're going to turn on for you. And then the initial server, this is this is pretty high for an initial server response. And this is 2.6 seconds. We want this to be on a, uh, at the worst, you'll still get an alert, but like seven, 800 milliseconds, but we want it to be below 600 milliseconds on a perfect vacuum of a site. So let's turn on some of these uh, settings for you here. Let me just log back into your site. Jason, why are I would love you to send a thank you to your support team because they've been absolutely brilliant to me. Oh, thank how they respond is fantastic. That means a lot. I will definitely pass that on. And, you know, that, that, that we really care and you guys are really nice. So it just it's a win win for everyone. And it's a pleasure. You know, we, we're really passionate about this stuff. So, OK, so let's turn on the CDN and here. Here's an example where we might get a warning for the Google Maps. I mentioned that before. Let's see what it says. Okay, here we go. It says, um, yeah, we're, I'm going to fix that for you. Um, we basically just need to reset the member profile. Um, this is what most people will get, actually, is this, Mary. Missing widget, bootstrap team profile. Anyways, nonetheless, what we want to do when we get this message, you guys can all follow on. It's a three two-step process. Go to your edit post settings. And for the member listings, we're going to restore the default code. So you can look for listing here. And we have, this is the member listing one, the one that just says listing or member listing. And under profile page design, we want to restore the default code. You just have some legacy code that doesn't work with uh, the, the Google Maps update. And I'm going to restore the member listing. This is also a good tool. If you kind of play around with your source code of your post types and you screw something up, you can always restore the code back to uh, the default here. So just a good tool in general. Okay, so now that this that has been updated, there's really nothing really loading here, just a widget, how that widget is there. I'm gonna go ahead and save the changes. And I'm gonna create an image kit account. I'm gonna create it on my account. You can create one after, you can watch the replay and see how to do it, but I'm just gonna create another uh, resource in my the new image kit account I set up. I'm gonna add new resource and we'll do apprenticeship directory. So this will be the name. They don't, well, they just want text in here. And okay, so we're creating an external resource origin name, just a nickname basically, and then HTTP, the website URL, save changes. Step two, create a URL endpoint, add new, uh, give it a nickname. We'll do apprenticeship directory. 
and just a description. And then we just got to pin it to an external resource we just created. What all this means, I don't know, but this is all you need to do. And then just copy this URL here, image kit, webinar, demo, apprenticeship directory, save. And we'll paste that in here, the other front end optimization setting here. So we got all three here, the trifecta for you. And let's just go to the site and make sure it's loading. And after we do this, then we can take a look at like your third party tools and see again, who the culprit is in, in hogging your bandwidth and things like that. The page seems to load pretty quick. And let's see here, it's loading the image kit URL. It is, we can see the URL here. It's the image kit webinar demo. So it's, it's now it's loading the images from uh, image kit CDN. Let's run the test again. Let's duplicate the tab and rerun the test. And even when I do these tests, I like to run them three or four times in a row and just see what the, the standard deviation is because every time they run it, you're gonna get a different number, but you wanna make sure that if you have a target, you're within that range. So you know, just doing it one time, I, I personally like to do them two or three times sometimes just to see exactly what range I'm in uh, with the scores. Let's, while we're there, let's um, take a look at your design settings and see what else could be loading on the site. Okay, so here we've jumped up from 56, and a, this is an important number, 3.9, uh, 5683, 3.9 to 6489, 3.4. So all the numbers have gone up uh, just a bit, and let's take a look at uh, what it's recommending here. Um, so you have, I'm in your design settings, and I see, do you know how much, I, I know it's nice to see the share modules here. Um, do you do you think people are using them on every page so much? No, not the side ones, just the ones on the pages, but not this one, no. Okay, let's, I'm not going to delete it. Let me just remove it temporarily. And then what is this Yandex one? Um, that's also, are you familiar with this counter? I have no idea what that is. No idea at all. You're you're not. It's not a third party tool that you have access to, like an analytics that you're tracking or anything. No, not that I know of. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, again, I'm not going to delete it, but we can we can uh, test the score by removing these temporarily. I'll put them in a little um, file here, Notepad. Overall, things are looking okay. So I've re I've removed the share this and the Yandex thing, whatever that was there, and no idea. Yeah, normally if the website owner doesn't know what something is, you can disable it or remove it because it's obviously yeah. uh, not something. I really using. don't try and add anything, Ken. You know, I don't add anything to the site. That is not that what comes from you now. I learned my lesson. Right. Another suggestion I would have for you specifically is because you're loading so many other images on your homepage and this slideshow, those are fine. I would recommend using just one image for the background because this slider, it's loading multiple hero images and the hero images are usually the largest types of images on a page. Um, normally it's fine, two, three, maximum four images, but because you also have all these other ones, uh, we can we can maybe just choose one that, uh, that you think represents, uh, you could probably find an image with different professionals in them because I see what you're trying to do. I will do. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got these from your site originally. Yeah. They're your one. That so yeah, I can always get another image for yeah. that. Yeah. Stock photo. Um all professions. You know, I'm just doing a quick Google search here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because it's an apprenticeship, it's it's different. Like, you know, you can get an image like this, and it'll just be one image that does the job for you. Um, I like that. That's uh, good. That does that covers everything. Right. So, what I just did a stock photo, all professions uh, search in Google. Uh, there's tons yeah. of images here. Find one that you like for your site. So, what I'll do since we're doing this on the the webinar, let me just quickly disable the slideshow. And just make sure we have some background, one of your background images uh, that loads. We can, let's just I temporarily, that, yeah. would you, could we just temporarily grab one of these for now? Yeah, that looks great. That covers it all. Okay. Make sure you, you that you do replace this with something else that, that yeah. you know, that uh, you get uh, from one of those stock photo sites. But let's use this for now. And then we'll save it and then we'll run the speed test again. And let me refresh this homepage. It still say it does that because the design settings are saving. 
Okay. Okay. And let me help you with one more thing. The text gets hard to read, especially we did another webinar mm -hmm. selecting a good homepage image. What we do have is something cool is a, an image color overlay. So you can add like a shadow, a tint over like a five, like a, a black tint with a 5% visibility. And then we can make the text white. I think that should look good for you. And then this text can be black actually, just a moment. And that should give you a slightly better contrast uh, for your text and the, and the image behind it. Uh, Looks like the shirt. I'm coming out to Los Angeles soon. I'm gonna come and hunt you down and say, here's my website. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can grab a cup of coffee, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so image overlay, it's not grabbing it. I will need to look into that later, but let me refresh this. All right, let's, we're here for the score. So let me, I'm going to see why the overlay yeah. is not working on your site, but it looks like it's still loading the share this despite the fact that we have removed it. So let's run the score and see where that's coming from. Let me duplicate this. And those, again, those are all things to take into consideration. If you're loading a ton of blog articles and events and they all have images on your homepage, maybe you don't want to use the image slider as well because we're just compounding more images uh, on a site. Right. I, that's a good thing. I can do that. I know how to do that. Yeah. Let's see where, let's see what banners you have. And you are using your banner ads, correct? Yeah, yes. I don't think I've got very many out because I'm just in the process of um, updating them. But at the moment, we took some off because they were conflicting when I was trying to do the search. Mm -hmm. So you'll, we took them off the other last week. Oh, that's better, isn't it? It, it is, but I want to find on your site where this share this on the side is coming from. Maybe this can tell me here just a moment. Um, okay, here it's this share this widget it's coming yeah all this share. see all this share this that plugin is adding all these individual resources all these images for pinterest twitter uh it's all so i think once we remove this share this you have to find out where it's coming from on your site like this now we're at a b here oh that's better from a d i'm, I'm quite happy with that all right we'll we'll check back Lindsay. i'll check back in a minute or so We'll find out where that is, and then we'll run the test and again. Let me take another question here, and then uh, we'll we'll check back in on your site, Lindsay. Thank you so much for your help, Jason. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Brilliant. Okay, good stuff there. We're going to get that to an A for you. Uh, let's see. I don't see any more hands up. What we'll do is I will follow up. Lindsay, post in the Facebook group, share your site, and we'll follow up, and I'll post some screenshots of the, the score differences that we achieved uh, with some of those optimizations. Really happy to see those. If you're not a member, please go there now and hit that join button. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook, and we will post a link to this replay. I know we covered a lot of stuff. We took a little extra time with some of these sites. I just wanted to give it that extra 10 or 15 minutes to make sure that we were taking advantage of all the settings. If you want us to take a look at your site, I'll start a thread in the Facebook group and we could take a look at some sites and we can see if we can enable some of these settings, turn them on and at least uh, tick the needles on some of those uh, page speed scores uh, for you guys. Had a great time today. Thank you so much, David, for putting together that tip of the week. The next webinar is going to be in two weeks. Definitely excited for that. It should be closer to the end of the month. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, please have a great day and a brilliant week, and we will see you guys in two weeks. Take care. Bye-bye.